In this video, I'm going to explain how to segment objects using models built using the cell pose architecture. Here I'm starting by demonstrating how effective cell pose models can be at finding objects of interest with the correct settings applied. But before I go into details of how to adjust these settings, let's learn a little bit about this architecture. Cell pose performs instance segmentation. This means that it attempts to identify each example or instance of your objects of interest. It was designed as a generalist algorithm for cellular segmentation. And it was designed by Carsten Stringer and colleagues at the Genelia Research Campus. Cell pose models are extremely effective at segmenting the cellular objects for which the architecture was designed, as well as a wide range of non-cellular objects of interest in materials analysis. Cell pose models can cope with crowded and touching objects. And cell pose can gain additional context from an optional second channel in color images or monochrome composite images. An optional size model can be trained. and This is dedicated simply to estimating the size of objects of interest. Cell pose finds a single class of objects per model. Let's now return to Image Pro. Open the AI prediction panel by clicking on the AI button on the count size ribbon. The deep learning prediction panel loads on the right of the application. The panel is organized into five simple steps. In step one, you can click load to access the model browser and choose a model. In step two, you can configure the appearance and set the class names of the objects you find. In step three, you can select the segmentation channel and a second optional channel. In step four, you set the model options, In step five, you apply the settings and count. Let's consider some of these steps in more detail. Starting with step three, where target channels are selected. It's important to choose the correct segmentation channel, but when models have been trained with a second optional seed channel set, selecting the correct second channel can greatly improve the performance of the model. The second channel adds context for the model. The fluorescent cells model was trained with a second channel set to the nuclear channel. In this composite image, the DAPI channel contains nuclei. If I set the seed channel to none and count, we can see some segmentation errors. When I restore the second channel, these errors are corrected. Next, let's look at the model options, starting with the object diameter. You should aim to set the diameter to match the diameter of your objects of interest. The diameter is displayed in calibrated units for calibrated images and in pixels for uncalibrated images. This setting is so important that it comes with a visual guide that shows you the currently set diameter. You can click on and move this guide to any location on the image or off the image if you prefer. The guide updates to reflect changes you make to the diameter field. And conversely, the diameter field updates to reflect changes you make to the size guide by dropping the control points. 
Most cell pose models come with a separate size model dedicated to estimating the size of your objects of interest. Clicking the estimate button is usually a good starting point for setting the diameter of your objects. You can tweak the estimated size and then count. Some cell pose models don't have a size model, and in some cases the estimate is poor. In these cases, it's easy to adjust the diameter to the correct range. Let me show you the importance of setting the diameter correctly. Here I'm searching for the large oval objects, nuclei, in this transmission electron micrograph. I'm going to use the TEM nuclei model. With the correct diameter set, all the nuclei are easily found. With the diameter set too small, we fail to correctly find the nuclei. This is also the case when the diameter is set too large. And again, let's finish off with the correct diameter and find all our objects correctly. Now let's consider the strictness and probability threshold settings. Strictness is defined as the likelihood that predicted objects are real. We can decrease this value to find more objects, but at an increased risk of finding false positives. Next, probability threshold. The probability that every pixel in an image is part of an object is calculated by a model, but only the pixels with a probability above this threshold are used to determine objects. Again, we decrease to find more and larger objects at the risk of finding false positives and making predicted objects too large. Let's illustrate this by trying to find the mitochondria in this transmission electron micrograph using the mitochondria model. The mitochondria are the dark structures in this image. Some have been sectioned along their short axes and others along their long axis. We'll start with a diameter of 92 and the default setting of 60 for strictness and 50 for probability threshold. Segmentation is exceptionally impressive but there are two examples of what clearly seem to be mitochondria we miss. Next, I'm reducing strictness to half its default value, 30, and the probability threshold to half of its default value, 25. When we count again, we segment the two objects we missed before. If we look carefully, we can see that we also are picking up some more objects that are probably not mitochondria, false positives. In this case, I can easily filter them out by area, but this is an excellent illustration of how decreasing strictness and probability threshold find more objects, but at the risk of finding lower quality objects. The final model option to mention is sparse mode. This option is useful in rare cases when the ratio of foreground objects to background is very low. In images such as this one. When I select the fluorescent cells model, and set the targets, diameter, strictness, and probability thresholds to values we'd expect to work, no objects are found. If I repeat the count with sparse mode selected, the objects in the image are found. Please keep in mind that this option is seldom needed and is likely to be helpful only when objects are indeed sparse. Let's finish this video by looking at options in section 5. Here you can find an option to apply filters and automatic splits. As cell pose is an instant segmentation architecture, 
finding each instance of an object of interest and separating it from neighboring and even touching objects, filters and splits are seldom useful. Indeed, applying filters and splits is likely to spoil the good work that your cell pose model is doing. As illustrated in this example, where unlabeled cells are found with the unlabeled cells model. And we can clearly see that there are some bad splits after applying this option. If we deselect the option and recount, we see that our results are greatly improved. So, use this option with great care. At the bottom of the prediction panel, you'll find links to deep learning related help topics. Much of the content of this video is explained in the troubleshooting prediction section, which I hope you find useful. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact Media Cybernetics and we'll be happy to help.